And starting off, I hadn't really intended um, to say this, but given the tone of the debate, I don't think anybody could question Jackie Bailey's commitment either to the C. difficile campaign or indeed to the veil of leaving hospital. And I regret that we seem to be now taking an approach which is personalising this about the way in which Jackie has brought uh, this motion to the Chamber today, because this is a very important issue. And I want to try and put a bit of context to this, because this is a, an issue that, of course, matters to people in Scotland, but right across the UK. In 2007, a major outbreak of C. diff prompted an inquiry at Maidstone Hospital in Kent. And following that inquiry, the Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells NHS Trust set in place an action plan. 2008-09 saw a reduction of over 60% in C. diff infections in that hospital compared with the previous year. And importantly, they have managed to maintain that improvement with a further 26% year-on-year reduction to the end of September this year. That means that they have exceeded their 2010-11 targets two years ahead of schedule. Now, I was interested to see exactly how they would managed to achieve that improvement, which, as I have indicated, sees a reduction that is, in fact, also well in advance of our targets. And I took the opportunity to visit Maidstone Hospital during the October recess. Now, on arrival at the hospital, the first thing visitors see is a large display explaining the Trust's crusade against hospital-acquired infections, and there is a hand gel process to be used by everyone entering the building. And if anybody did pass by without using the gels, they would immediately be met by a volunteer or a member of staff who would point out the hand hygiene policy and ask them to comply before they even got as far as the main reception desk, never mind a ward or a clinic. Now, a number of important factors have been taken forward in Maidstone. They've opened permanent isolation wards. They've introduced a restricted antibiotic policy. They have introduced new rapid risk assessment procedures for patients with diarrhoea, which has helped not only reduce C. diff cases, but they've also dramatically reduced the number of beds closed because of norovirus over the winter months. Every case of C. diff or HEI is now subjected to a root cause analysis, and only two episodes of cross-infection affecting four patients occurred in 2008-09. Efforts have also been made to tackle MRSA by screening all patients coming into the hospital for elective treatment and improving procedures on blood culture practice. And I think it's just perhaps worth noting again in context that if we compare HEI rates in England and Scotland in the last couple of years, England has seen a 57% reduction in MRSA rates, while Scotland at 23% is still lagging somewhat behind. Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells have also done a number of other things that we are seeing happening here or want to see happen here. New uniform and dress code, including a bare below the elbows regime. More than 4,000 staff have attended additional training sessions on hand hygiene. And when I spoke to staff, they said that was very useful because it explained why the new procedures were being introduced. I think that's important in the context of the comments from the RCN. They plan to continue that training. They also plan to increase the use of hydrogen peroxide fogging to decontaminate side rooms and isolation wards. They are going to extend their uh, root cause analysis to include surgical wound infections. They also intend to extend the screening on admission uh, of patients for MRSA. Now, while all of those measures are vital, and as I've acknowledged, you know, they do mirror some of the things that are happening here, Perhaps the most significant thing was that there had also been a radical change of culture in that hospital and in that organisation. Very clear responsibilities were laid down. Senior staff, and this was very important to everyone, in microbiology and in nursing were identified as being responsible for leading the work, but on the basis that every member of staff in the Trust also has a responsibility. The appointment of an additional consultant microbiologist and two senior matrons to work on infection control was seen as absolutely critical to making the improvements. So on a tour of the wards, I had the opportunity to hear from those matrons and from the consultant microbiologist about exactly what had happened at ward level. Now, Jackie Bailey spoke of the need for information to be provided on the NHS website, and I, and I agree with Jackie's comments. It is difficult, actually, to find the information, and for members of the public, it must be very difficult indeed. 
But in Maidstone Hospital, what they now do is that the information on instances of C. diff in particular wards is visibly displayed on posters at the entrance to each ward so that people going into the hospital, visitors and patients can actually see. And it's also a reminder for the hospital staff of how important uh, this actually is. There is routine scrutiny on a weekly basis. Minister. I'm happy to learn lessons from anywhere Maidstone included, but I wonder if Cathy Jimison has visited any uh, of the Scottish hospitals that are participating, for example, in the patient safety programme, where she'll see the same poster displays uh, showing improvement and performance in a range of areas. I mean, it's fine to draw lessons from elsewhere. What's not fine, in my view, is to ignore the similar progress that's been made in hospitals in Scotland. I hope that Nicola Sturgeon actually heard me saying I recognise that these actually mirror a number of the initiatives that are going on in Scotland. I'm very aware of the patient safety programme. But what I am trying to put uh, to Parliament here is the change in culture. All of these things were important. It was not simply about each of the individual things. It was about using that to absolutely change the culture. And speaking to the nursing staff, they felt that was very, very important because they described how during previous outbreaks and episodes of infection, people had been counting numbers, but nobody had actually spotted what was going on. And that was a direct quote. Another member of staff told me that previously everybody had been working away in their own areas and the bigger picture had been missed. And I think, again, that that's very relevant to suggestions today that somehow in calling for um, additional work to be done, we are attacking staff in the NHS. Far from it. We want, we want to recognise the work being done by NHS staff and to support them. Presiding officer, in, in closing, I just want to uh, make the point again that a number of the staff that I met, and, and indeed this is mirrored again in Scottish uh, situations, made the point that much of what was now being done could be described as common sense, yet it needed constant monitoring and direction to ensure that the good practice and the consistently applied standards did not slip. And I think that's important in the context of our motion today. Everyone was acutely conscious that this was not just about ticking boxes, but was about saving lives. We will, no doubt, learn further lessons from the veil of leave and inquiry, but in the meantime, we can't stand still. And I'm glad to hear Nicola Sturgeon say that she is more than happy to learn lessons from anywhere, uh, whether that's in Scotland or in the UK. I think there are lessons to be learned from what's been achieved in Maidstone, and I hope that we can stretch our aspirations further than the very modest targets that have been set here in Scotland.